Moving on next, we are looking at electoral politics matters. And we have in the studio Honorable Yao Boabing Asamoah. He is the MP for Adentan, Adentan constituency. Also uh, is the director of communications for the NPP. Good morning. Welcome to the show. Uh, let me announce that when we're done with um, Honorable Boabi Asamoah, we will have um, our turn with um, the General Secretary of the NDC talking about Mr. Esiedu Nketia. So do stay glued to your sets for that as well. COVID-19 has come and it's um, wrecking havoc, as we keep saying. Um, all sectors of life um, have been affected. Politics has not been spared. Um, electoral politics specifically has not been spared. And we are going to look at that, um, this part of the show. Uh, trying to understand how the two political parties are gearing up for the 2020 elections, which in itself has also been affected. Um, we are not sure of the way moving into um, December 2020, what's going to happen. We wait to see what the EC and the political parties together fashion out. But uh, for now, we have Honourable in the studio, so we will turn to him and see exactly what is happening. How, how are things with the NPP? <laughs> COVID-19. Things with the MPP. That's a very broad question. Yes, a lot. But, in yeah. terms of, you know, looking at election 2020, yeah. because usually by now it, it, it would have been yes. intense campaigning here and there, but that clearly is, is missing and, and, and for obvious reason. Mm. So how is the party doing? Thank you. First of all, let me remind your readers, your, your listeners, your viewers, <laughs> viewers and listeners, uh, yes. since uh, you chose to mention the post-interview personality, <laughs> that I'm, I'm, I'm going to try my best to represent my general secretary, who was supposed to be here, mm -hmm. but couldn't be available. So uh, uh, his, my views are not his. Very well. we <laughs> my views that. are not his, but sure. I'm representing him. Very well. Yes, and as much as possible, I'll try and focus on what the party it looks like at the mm -hmm. moment, just like you said. Mm -hmm. So my greetings to all your viewers. Uh, the MPP is poised. Under normal circumstances, we should at this stage have been in full flight campaigning. And uh, the question then becomes what really has been the notion of campaigning. Mm. And for us and for Ghana as a whole, it's about bringing people together big rallies small rallies mostly meetings mm -hmm. direct engagements and and engagement uh, with ec at some point as well yes and now covid 19 uh, has cleared yeah. all that so it's we are in entirely new territory uncharted territory and i like the phrase that is beginning to come up the new normal sure uh -huh. so so now the new normal implies that we may never be able to go back even if we did, we may never be able to do it at the same intensity mm -hmm. we used to do the things we did before mm -hmm. COVID-19. So now if we are doing anything, we have to do it in the context sure. of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. um, the first thing is to have somebody do the backroom thinking stuff. So the campaign team has been announced. Under normal circumstances, it would have been announced with fanfare, probably at a rally, a whole lot of people. Mm -hmm. But this time it's been announced and, and yeah. it's virtual. We, were not, we couldn't bring them mm -hmm. together. And so now, the first point of call is to determine how the campaign is going to take place. And then you determine the elements mm -hmm. involved in that campaign. You still have the traditional elements. You have the messaging, you have the touching the people. You have to touch people. Question is, touch. In quotes. In quotes, that has to be redefined. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How do you go about touching mm -hmm. people? So, so um, I expect that the party, as the driving force behind the campaign, uh, will be gearing up for a new approach, mm. an entirely new approach. Very well. And I expect that the first duty of the named campaign team is to define that new approach. But above all, I expect that that new approach will be underpinned by resort to electronic Definitely. means, the internet sure. and all the other right. uh, instruments that it offers us. Okay. And so we are going to see an election which is virtually virtual, sure. though not in all its parts, because right. you can still meet people Definitely. and observe the protocols. Right. 
social distancing and, 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 and the protocols that have helped. Until things substantially change, we're not going to be seeing the big rallies and all of that. The big rallies, because we're looking at numbers. For the past week, what has been exercising me, the biggest question that has been exercising me is, when do we finally accept that things have changed? Because when you say things have changed, now you're talking about the end of what we are seeing now. Mm -hmm. When will the end be? Nobody knows. Question one, yes. Are we going to have to have an end where we live with COVID? In the sense of ongoing infections, ongoing treatment. And now that's what we are doing. But in doing that, we are only living half a life. Mm -hmm. Because we are not able to go to work 100%. Exactly. And a whole lot of things. Uh, we've been reduced. The engagement has reduced drastically. Oh. Economic life is about a quarter or a third okay. down. So, so when will normal be? So that is the first normal we are saying. Is it possible that COVID will be declared completely over? <laughs> I'm thinking about mm -hmm. it politically. Mm -hmm. and, and, and completely over means what? That when there are no more infections, mm -hmm. and would that mean only Ghana? And two, that everybody who was impacted has been cured and that we are seeing no more deaths. Mm -hmm. That means it's final. final. It's all gone. Is it possible? Yeah. Or is it possible that at some point we would say that oh, we've realized the trends, we can contain it. And, and because we know the trends and we can contain it, life can return to some sort of normalcy whilst we live to, yeah, with it and engage it. So, so right. th these are the, the, the scenarios Definitely. within which the political party has to right. position itself. Sure. Well, let's look at your primaries. Mm. That was to have come off on the 25th of April, uh, parliamentary primaries. And yeah. obviously that has been put on hold because of COVID-19. How is the party... Um, looking at dealing with this issue because you need to have your parliamentary candidates going into the elections. Yes. It's six months away, election six months away. We don't have um, parliamentary candidates of the NPP. Yes. What are the plans the party is looking at? You talk about um, adjusting to the new normal or devising new strategies of you know, getting some of these things done. What is the party looking at doing in terms of your primaries? First we've had discussions, so let me just throw this in. We've had some mm -hmm. suggestions come out, but subsequently, um, your general, um, general secretary, John Buedo, I believe, yes, apparently there were some reports that he had indicated that if push comes to shove, the NEC would have to um, impose candidates. But he came out to say that wasn't the case. And, but that doesn't resolve the issue. You still need to have in place parliamentary candidates. What is the party going to do? What are your, thinking, a, your, your a, thought processes like? It's a very delicate explanation mm. because it's nuanced. Sure. Our party constitution confers the right on the National Executive Committee to select okay. candidates. So, so the provision is elect or select. Mm. And this was in there. That constitution is as old as before democracy COVID. before COVID-19. <laughs> so, so the possibility exists that even before COVID-19, uh, NEC had the authority and capacity to select candidates because it is the party which is projecting itself. The party presents us to the electoral mm. commission. But that, let me ask, under what circumstances would the NEC be required under your constitution to select given that it's either a selection or an election? Under what circumstances, or oh, the constitution doesn't provide for that? Yes, let, let me state right from the beginning that we are not, there is no situation now where the party says they are selecting. Right? That's the misunderstanding that has happened with the uh, uh, general secretary trying to explain mm. the options available, mm. that we could have an election or in the extreme, NEC has the opportunity to select. And okay. then he's been taking on saying that we're going to select and all that. Impose, that there thing. is no stated criteria within the constitution. Mm. But the most important thing is that whoever is given the opportunity to stand on behalf of the party must be one that gives the party comfort in terms of capacity and ability to deliver in respect of votes, mm. in respect of winning. And, and that involves a lot of things, your, your social standing, integrity, so many other things, your winability, a whole lot of factors. Now, those factors and the normal circumstances come out at a primary. 
election where you have an electoral college made up of delegates who are supposed to know you within the community exactly, context. Exactly, make that determination. Yes, mm. so they make that determination based on all these community uh, factors. But at the end of the day, it is still the party that presents you to the uh, electoral mm. commission. So the ideal position is to have delegates select because even the delegates they select, they elect by they select by election. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? Yes. <laughs> they select by election. Mm -hmm. So now, how do we organize a credible primary process yep. in the context mm -hmm. of COVID? COVID nineteen, yeah. Uh, I think the first thing that will exercise the new campaign team is that because they need the material to work yeah. with. The people apart from many of the other things that they need the people so they will have to make an input into that process so for but now there's no clear way strategy in terms of you know, there, there's lots of thinking going okay. on there's lots of thinking going on and and most of it uh, involves some level of uh, protection social protocols observing the protocols mm -hmm. some level of virtuality mm. But above all, I think the question that exercises everybody is, when would it be appropriate to hold any such event, however, whichever way is couched, mm -hmm. in the context of the ongoing battle right. against COVID? Right. Yes. Now, let, let's go back to the bit about the neck having the powers to select. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure you know that people have raised issue about that and the fact that that perhaps would be undemocratic, i.e. not giving the delegates that opportunity to choose. And so in the case where we don't know under what predetermined conditions the neck would come in, it would seem as though they would be acting a bit arbitrarily, if, if, if you like. It's, it's interesting that that matter comes up now because it's been in the constitution throughout. Mm -hmm. And it's the same delegates who accepted the constitution. Yes, so, so there's a sense. And, and the members of NEC a broad ranging group within mm. the party who are leadership within the party so in a sense neck is not an imposition on the party mm. so so the the word is not imposition but arbitrariness yes mm. you can look at arbitrariness but the question then becomes whether or not neck in taking any decision would be seen not to be acting in the interest of the party that it represents that's why i'm saying it's a very sure. nuanced Sure, it is, yeah. Huh. So, so before now, we've had issues with parliamentary mm -hmm. uh, 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 candidate selections, uh, if you recall. Oh, yeah. In 07, 08, we had... A lot. Issues. Yes, <laughs> we had a lot of issues. But, but we always learn. Mm -hmm. And that in learning, the ideal is that you leave it at candidate delegate level. But now we are genuinely faced... With a novel situation what do we do in the face of a situation that has changed everything that we knew before if you approach the current situation with the old contest position in mind frankly you can't move anywhere because that contestual position in mind is that then you need uh, to have agents mm. security uh, so so you have a situation where people may even question the mode you bring up right. and say it's arbitrary Suppose we say, okay, virtual votes. Mm -hmm. And somebody says, yeah, how do I police I it? How do I count it? And, you know, <laughs> when you even break it down to the lowest denominator, will there be consensus mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. the outcomes? Would people even accept the people managing on their behalf? Assuming you have to do it by polling station. Uh, for example, in Adenta, I have about 147 polling stations. Mm -hmm. If you are doing a polling station level, are the managers at police station level going to be acceptable to all the contestants? Assume you do it at electoral area level, will they be all acceptable? Are you assuming you do it by telephone? <laughs> who is going to oh, man yeah. the telephone and who is going to confirm that this How is their vote? Them, yeah. there, there, are, there are issues. There are issues. But hmm. the bottom line is that there will be a primary. There will be. To the best okay. of the party's ability. Because as long as there will be an election on December 7th, and our constitution is very inflexible mm -hmm. on that, mm -hmm. then there will be a need to have a process of MPs mm -hmm. who have been consensually accepted, mm -hmm. whichever method you choose. 
In other words, if you don't do that and you don't have MPs consensually accepted, then what you do is you alienate people sure. who then may not look at the bigger picture, may look at their personal circumstances and say, well, if this is the way you want it, mm. I'm out. And mm. then it accumulates mm. and it can impact you. Right. We hope it doesn't get to that stage. We hope that we all appreciate that where we stand now is not natural. We hope that we all accept that the rules are no more. There are no rules anymore. And that we have to make up the rules as we go along. And we hope that we all agree that whatever comes out ultimately as the structure that we use, mm. there won't be... So clearly, at this point, it's all about consensus building. Exactly. Then. So that and that process can go on. Oh yes. Even, you know, in this COVID era, it you is can going have on. Those kinds. It well. is going on. That okay. is why the debates sure. about the general secretary's question. Sure. That's why I'm saying that for the first time we are looking at next power to select. Mm -hmm. Well, it's been there all this while. It's been there in mm -hmm. the constitution all this while. Nobody engaged it because the circumstances are not come up right. for it. Because but, uh, you could yes, have selected so, one or two people before. Right. And nobody would have noticed. So. But now, if we are going to select wholesale, then people notice. Right. It raises an issue about mm -hmm. perhaps you, the party considering reviewing that part where you make specific provisions or conditions under which the N NEC could actually select. I'm sure if you put in measures where, I mean, of course, with COVID-19, there's a benefit of hindsight, so we would need to know, we can better couch certain yeah. things so that it wouldn't require now for you to reach out to people, have that kind of meeting with the view of forming or building consensus. Yeah, but assuming that's the extreme, that is exactly what will come out because we have to plan for that, the mm -hmm. contingency, exactly. what is immediately doable if tomorrow is lifted and they say oh, we can go and vote mm -hmm. with protocols then there's no issue. Mm. Or we can say we have a mix of voting plus something else electronic mm. and there's no issue. Or we realize that uh, we can't do anything against the rules mm. because the rules are, we also subject to the rules. Exactly. The government has imposed rules which we must all follow in right. order to preserve the health of everybody. We can't endanger lives exactly. the, in the interest of elections. So right. in the event that in the extreme it's gotten to the stage where we can't do anything but select, there will definitely be something about uh, something, that. Something, will, something uh, we'll have to give at some yeah, point. There, there how that happens, something that comes how up that happens. in terms of how it's done sure. and all that. But it's good that the debate is on. Very well. Now there's awareness of it, mm -hmm. that it's there. And, and, and even though immediately the reaction would be to the, the, those who would feel disadvantaged. Well, the assumption is that if we are selecting, then it impacts all incumbents. Exactly. And that is why the agitation that, oh, then it would mean that incumbents are going to be favored mm -hmm. over uh, uh, those who are seeking to come in. Sure. But then if there is a criteria and it's consensual, then you may even find that certain incumbents mm. may be delisted right. from the selection process. Obviously, the party has a lot of work to do and particularly the campaign, <laughs> the campaign team newly announced. But let's take a look at the other side of this whole process, looking at the EC's work. So definitely there's the party internal issues. But then there's the EC side of things. And now we're looking specifically at the conduct of the December 7 elections. As you indicated, the constitution is strict about it. It's given us a date to do this. And so we have to get it done one way or the other, which has implications for your activities as well. But before we get to the elections, I think before COVID became a very big issue as it is now, there was talk about the voters register compilation of a new voters register that engaged i believe the opposition parties the whole of last quarter of last year a great deal and indeed some parts of this year the early early quarter uh, the first quarter we the npp we know is 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 in favor of the compilation of a new register and the ec has scheduled it to start on 18th april that didn't happen as it is now, we are not sure what is going to happen. But we have looked at, in terms of your primaries, we have looked at issues and talked about the fact that it has to happen. Do you think with the situation of the, um, the new voters register, that also has to happen? Or we could rely on the old voters register or the existing voters register? There are two things. Discipline. Uh, first of all, first of all, all the arguments before COVID, have to be reviewed and washed away in the light of COVID. 
first of all, mm. whatever the arguments were, the historicity of the EC, what they did before, what they did, we have to look at everything in a new light. If we are doing so, then we have to look at it in terms of discipline mm. and acceptance. Discipline and acceptance. As a society, and particularly as a political society, we must begin to accept that there's a certain point where decisions that are made must be accepted. Very well. By on us. that note, please, let you're still watching and listening to the key points live on TV3, also live on 3FM 92.7, and online at 3news.com, also on our Facebook page, TV3 Ghana. So we have with us Honorable Yap Wabing as someone we're looking at. Um, the NPP and how it's preparing uh, for election 2020 amid COVID-19. Um, before then, let me take some messages that have come through, uh, quite a lot coming in respect of our first, uh, the first half of our conversation, looking at the uh, COVID-19 and how we're dealing with that. So this one says, good morning, I'm Eben from Kwabinya, uh, Way Junction. Our case has increased within the shortest time, so fellow folks, I think it's better we all abide by the precautionary measures for our own good, let's stay alive today and be able to live tomorrow to pick to kick out um, a bad government. Happy, Ma okay. So this one says, "Happy Mother's Day in advance to my mom, Dora Entre." Uh, and this is coming from Elikim Akurugu, Dome Kwabenya constituency. Aziz Donline was says, "How can Ghana reach and speak in these dangerous times of the pandemic when Ghana Health Service hasn't tested all the potentially potentially infected persons across the country? In fact." In an emergency situation such as a COVID-19 pandemic, one would expect every leader to make use of available resources and urgently complete all uncompleted infrastructure before commencing new ones. With, uh, with several government-funded community, district, regional and national health facilities at various levels of completion, it is illogical to complete and put them to appropriate use at this crucial time. Um, another one coming in says, good morning, Abna, I'm Gloria in Domain. If your data is wrong, COVID infection rate will expose you. Okay, I think you. <laughs> uh, going back to Dr. Mahmoud Baumir's infamous statement. Um, from Mystic Inside in Sawam Adwaiji, he says, good morning to you. Um, COVID is escalating and scary, so Nanado shouldn't be uh, intransigent by listening to his COVID-19 team alone, but also experts like the Ghana Medical Association um, how can you, he says, let me use this medium to thank John Mahama, the incoming president and minority, for the massive support for the fight against COVID-19. Um, good morning, Abna. According to Noguchi, they have cleared the backlog, but the results are yet to be released. So that's why we still have results adding up. That's Nanapuku in Takrade. I'll take two more and then we can go back to Honorable. Good morning, Abna. I think our specific ex our scientific, sorry, experts are all um, okay, your choice of word here is inappropriate. I'm not going to read that. Um, nobody can convince me Ghana has peaked. There are difficult times ahead. That's Kweku in La Paz. Abna, good morning. I don't understand why our experts are trying to put dust into our eyes since when did clearing backlog mean pre prepared samples and processing? If we are not fed with, um, I'm not, I'm not getting this, sorry, but it's not clear. We will pull the brakes on the messages here and return to Honourable. We were, just before the break, we we're looking at the voter registration exercise and the fact that it has to, it, it had to be put on hold because of COVID and how to deal with the situation. So please carry on. Obviously, a sampling of your message is countrywide demonstrates the concern with COVID, which yes. is what the EC, I believe, will be looking at. I did begin by saying that we have to look at discipline yes. and acceptability. First of all, all the arguments we made before are arguments that at this stage cannot be rehashed in a context that makes them credible. Now, assuming the larger argument about a new register and an old register, between the two, you will still do intensive human-based activities. Because mm -hmm. assuming you were even going to work with the old register, you would still have to buy the constitution. Same thing. Register 18 classes, last limited registration over a million. Mm. So if you don't, the assumption is that you may be disenfranchising yes. over a million people. That's significant. Do you say that because of COVID, you won't put them on when the constitution says yes? That means you can also... So they'll be bringing suits against the You ECS can also say no yeah. to other things the constitution mm. is asking for if you mm. can say no to that. So that means that even if it is limited, it is 
social distancing mm -hmm. of huge proportions. And that means anything you can design for a million people should be resilient enough to take 10 million people. Right. <laughs> so, so okay. more or less. No, anything, any, yes, anything you, you make or a case you make for, for registration, you, you might as well make, make for. Make a new registration. Exactly. So, so the arguments before, that's mm. what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So, so now, even if you are using the old register, you have to do limited registration. Yeah. Then, if you do an old register or the new register, you still have to do exhibition. One could say exhibition is social distancing, but what about the officials who have to sit there all the while? What about the equipment that has to be used and all that? So you have to do verification. Mm -hmm. So these are intensive human activities. Then it comes to the equipment, uh, managing the equipment, uh, cleaning up, repairs, uh, replacements, and all that. So, so there is a situation where once a registration has to happen, whichever approach you choose, whether it's a new register or mm -hmm. an old one you are going to update, you have human intensive sure. activities. And what we are dealing now with is a, it's a, 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 a pandemic that is against human intense activities. So, so we are at a point where difficult as it seems, we must be disciplined enough to accept that we sit with the EC or the EC gives us a clear guide. Mm. But the EC is also operating within the larger laws of the land, even though they are independent mm. in terms of the operational capacity. Sure. Yes. So, so what is acceptable to the nation? What will preserve the health and state of the nation? What are the timelines that we can all mutually agree right. to compress or to shift? What is most acceptable in terms of a start time? Is it possible that we wait for a clear signal from the government? And if that's the case, and there's a point where that signal comes and there's very narrow window, that the EC is enabled by all of us to do whatever it has to do mm. in a consensual framework. So it is not business as usual. Right. I don't think it's business as usual so what would, at what all. Would the part, what would the NPP recommend to the EC in respect of the voter registration? Because you, Coming into this um, era, if you like, COVID-19 era, you had a certain position, which is, let's have a new I, voters I, register. Is the party willing to say, well, let's go with the old I register? Think, I think the bottom line is that our party will, first of all, respect the national strictures on movement and other things. Or rather, should I say the national strictures on COVID-19? Yeah. I think that's the first thing that the party will pay attention mm -hmm. to. Then the next step is that within those strictures, convince us, because the party represents Ghanaians, and Ghanaians must be assured of their safety, sure. health, and everything. So convince us that you have a viable process to deliver mm -hmm. this. And if it's convincing, we will do our national duty as a party and support that process. Because like I'm saying, pre-COVID positions, anybody you know, who comes here to argue pre-COVID positions will be a prehistoric monster. <laughs> anybody who comes in here and says that COVID justifies uh, 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 not running a new register and doing an old register and all that, because the person will be deliberately is, creating is, the impression I, that... I suspect that uh, is a preemptive strike. Well, I like coming. <laughs> not everybody, not everybody in the political space accepts that these things are as they are. But it's a fact. Mm -hmm. Anybody who comes here and says COVID-19 justifies the need why you shouldn't have a mm -hmm. new register will be telling you that mm -hmm. uh, uh, COVID-19 supports an old register. When the old register is not there for the taking, there's man, human, hours intensive activity whichever right. way you go mm. and therefore it is time that we sat back thought through it and expect the ec mm -hmm. to also engage carefully but for all of us discipline and acceptability mm. we must discipline ourselves to appreciate the difficulties we are all in where this election is concerned right. and we must have an open heart acceptable to what consensually makes the best sense for mm. all of us. Mm. And that means that the possibility of mutually agreeing to compress some of the timelines 
agreeing to take certain decisions that would appear not to conform to the given guidelines, mm. but which will end up practically and efficiently helping the EC to deliver an election. Right. Now, um, even as we still figure out what to do and all of that, there is still uh, some element or, or there's the need for political parties to also be aware that there's something at stake. And definitely in respect of that, there's that level of, you know, prepare, preparing to campaign. In fact, some say that the, the, the government, um, through the, the, the president, has been campaigning with his COVID-19 speeches and all of that. But how is that being uh, played out or how is the party looking at reaching its um, base and, of course, reaching out to people it intends to win over for or ahead of the 2020 elections in terms of campaigning? What, what is, what is the strategy? I began by saying that the fact that we have put in a campaign team means we are preparing. Sure. That's, that's a clear signal that we need to prepare mm -hmm. and that we have to do the background thinking and all that. But let us not underestimate the Ghanaian voter. Mm -hmm. Let us not underestimate the Ghanaian voter. I deliberately said that twice. Because if you vote today, the Ghanaian voter knows what they want. And they will vote for what they want. Yeah. So campaigning only reinforces certain issues, perceptions, spaces, positions. But at the end of the day, at any point in time, the voter will vote based on performance and the issues that impinge on their lives. For anybody to say that the president is campaigning by managing COVID. Because if the president hadn't addressed us, the, best, the first complaint would have been, where is the president? We have neighbor countries where that question is being asked. Where is the president? You understand? So every country has adopted a situation where the president, the prime minister, the leader of the government is the first line of public education. Mm. Because people want such assurance that they cannot be relying on second, third hand information. Now, the president has a structure behind him. He is dealing with the task team set up with recognized leaderships mm. of our most, uh, the, the scientific community, and now has a leader who is a worldwide acknowledged mm -hmm. expert in this process. They also have opportunity to engage the public in the processes where there are media briefings mm -hmm. led by the Ministry of Information. Even as we speak, our main opponents say that there isn't enough education. So who is supposed to do that enough education? The source of the leadership is the government. And it's one of the things we must accept in our politicking. That at some point, a fact is a given. Mm -hmm. It is a given fact that Nanado is in charge. It's a given fact that, fortunately or unfortunately, and I think it's unfortunate, it has happened that in his time, in the election year, something like COVID has hit us. Is he to abandon leadership? Relegate himself to the background and wait for COVID to pass? Of course not. He must lead. He must determine the resource issues. He must determine the direction in which we go with adequate advice. And so the structure he has taken to some people worldwide is working. Because if you are aware, WHO has said that mm -hmm. we are amongst the top six in terms of managers of COVID. And I have been saying, I have been saying that he's made two situations that has influenced the world wide uh, one statement but it created two situations that statement where he said that we can't bring back life but we, back can, life, bring back. But we can bring the economy back so it focused the world's attention mm. on preventing loss of life and how do you prevent loss of they invested in frontline uh, 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 what do you call it frontline personnel fighting it invested in tracking tracing and all that they invested in measures which were difficult but which would preserve lives. Mm. It was heavily influenced by what our president said. Right. The second thing is the economy. Now, worldwide, there's an acceptance, an understanding that the old methods of assessing economies and otherwise and the deficit and all that may be out of the window. It was in a very short while 
because the entire economy of the world shut down with the closure of borders, non trading, no movement, and otherwise. The key drivers of the world economy, especially oil, commodity China. trading, are all down, currency trading, and all that. Because you trade currencies when you travel, when you trade. Yes, trade is the backbone. There's no trade. There is no trade in the world. It stopped suddenly. So, where does the world economy find itself? Yeah. Having to reflate. And in reflating, we in Africa also have the opportunity yeah. to do things that would otherwise not be acceptable before COVID. So, so those two things are there. He's okay. leading. He is leading. Okay. But if you want to say that he's campaigning and that you feel that you must campaign, I think the decent thing to do is to accept that he's in a position where he has no option but to lead. Mm. And therefore, you must also demonstrate a leadership that's acceptable to the people. You don't come in right. and I try believe, to I downgrade. Believe, speaking of, yes, mm. so the former president also trying to, like you're saying, exactly. well, he did that, and I believe there was a response yes. by Dr. Baumia. And yes. we, are, we have that. We'll listen to that. I want your reaction on, on that because you do know that it has caused a stare in, um, in the course of the week. So let's, mm. let's take a listen to that if, if it's ready. Mm. Eight years that they had in office, in government, to demonstrate their prowess in managing this country and managing the, the economy. After eight years, what did they leave us with? They left us with declining agriculture, declining industry, interest rates were high, inflation was high. In fact, if you look at the data, in terms of macroeconomic performance in any economy, since the year 2000, the tenure of the former president was the worst in, in, in terms of outcome. He advised officials who are politicking to desist from it. My humble advice to former president Mahama is to take a look at the data. This is not green book data. Oh. This is just the data. Right? Take a look at the data before you speak. Otherwise, you will end up embarrassing yourself. He was confident on government determination to maintain a strong economic stability. There is no government in the history of the Fourth Republic, the first term government in the history of the Fourth Republic, that has provided as much infrastructure across all the sectors, whether you're talking about roads, you're talking about water, you're talking about t toilets, you're talking about education, you're talking about health. So that was Dr. Baumia there speaking or responding to um, uh, some comments made by um, uh, former President John Dramani Mahama, who had indicated or um, tried to give some suggestions to government in its handling of COVID-19. I will come to you in a, in, in a minute, but quickly, let me make reference here to a statement that, uh, that has been issued by um, uh, Professor Kwame Na Ahoy in respect of Dr. Baumiasim. He says, this is terrible political judgment. We are in the middle of crisis. We don't know how it's going to end, yet you are comparing it with a crisis that was managed and resolved more than four years ago. Besides, how do you compare a crisis whose cost is calculated in loss of human lives with crisis whose cost is calculated in loss of material production? And if this does not amount to a politicization of the pandemic, what does? What do you say, Honorable? I say that, first of all, Prof. Ahoy had it totally and completely wrong. Because... It is not about the parameters of the crisis. He is comparing leadership, the skills used, the approach, and the ability to manage and move forward. That's what he's comparing. And he's saying that given a crisis, the kind of crisis you had, you failed. You didn't exhibit leadership capacity, you didn't exhibit quality enough to overcome it. And people died in doing so. People died in surgeries. People died in, uh, 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 what do you call, fires that broke out from generators. And people died. So you shouldn't assume that people didn't die. But what Dr. Baumia is saying is that, were you able to constructively lead us out of Dumso? What was the damage the country's economy sustained under your leadership when that was there? Heavy damage. We ended up now paying half a million 
half a billion dollars in overcapacity that we're not using. That is their product. And a billion the following year. And we are going to pay more if we don't restructure. But That's the, what he left us but, with. But, now, but, okay. now, we have a crisis, another crisis, and it hits the economy hard. And yet, we are able to scramble and quickly keep everything going. And it's going because we, even though we are not going back and forth, even though we are not trading, even though government's revenues are down, because you can't collect mm -hmm. incomes from people who are not working, we are still paying our bills. We are still cushioning the people. And we are making efforts to restart the economy with the stimulus packages that we are developing, including engaging the banks to engage mm -hmm. the tourism sector. But Dr. Palmia, in that, in, that, in that speech, if you like, mm. whilst admonishing you know, people to stop politicizing the issue, mm. could be said to be also politicizing the issue, wouldn't you say so? And that has been the basis for the it's, criticism. You see, the difficulty is who, when you begin in politics to, to try and pin blame for a certain event and at a set exact time, when did Baumia politicize? Was he the first to politicize? <laughs> so you're who looking at who started, who started it? Could, yeah, but that's the, the question. Who started and who ends? Because there could also be people saying, ah, he's talking and you're not saying anything. And he was saying a lot of things which were off track, but which gave the impression. Because he was trying to be political. He was trying to be statesman-like. Mm. He felt, as the opposite to Nanado, that he needed to set up a platform that will compete with Nanado in the fight against COVID. So he starts making comments about the ways we are going about it. He starts it's, a, it's an election here. Yeah. Very limited so, opportunities so, so, to campaign. So then why is Bobby so being blamed? He is. <laughs> so, so why is Bobby <laughs> being blamed? That's you know what I'm saying. It's a limited election year, so that's what he is saying. But should he be left to say those things? For example, when he said that the economy has been exposed by COVID. Is it the case mm. that the economy has been exposed by... Then the economies of the whole world have been exposed by COVID. So right. he's making a mistake. When he says that we run to the rapid, uh, to the IMF, IMF to take a rapid credit facility and say that only Ghana out of all the Africa. At the point, at the time he was saying that over 20 African countries had received support. Very it well. was inaccurate. It doesn't reflect on its integrity and it's just sheer showmanship. Right. And when he went out, I'd rather me laugh. I get it. He but went see, out sharing let's food. get to the important point. <laughs> I need to wrap up with you. Right. Your message, NPP, going into election 2020, platform for you. What is the, the message? People. It will always be about the people. The people are the center of governance. Mm. We've been elected to serve the people. The concerns of the people is what will drive this election. And as we stand here, clearly, clearly, people are concerned about their livelihoods. How do you get livelihoods back mm. on track? That's a key element. People are concerned about engagement. How will life look like? So if life is going to look like a virtual world, then government must drive a process to enhance the ability of people right. to engage virtually. It will always be about education and health. How do we put in the structures either to contain COVID if it's still with us or prevent it happening again? And the president has been clear. He's going to invest heavily in the mm. health sector. That, it's about education. That's the sound. Our kids are at home. Prompting me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But thank you so much, Honorable <laughs> Yambu Abiyan Samoa. He is the MP for Adetan Constituency and also the Director of Communications for the NPP.